Hi guys, welcome to the introduction to maps in R, Shiny and Leaflet. In this course, we will be building a web map application using the R programming language. So as you can see before you, I will be demoing the application that we'll be building in this course. So I built this application in R Studio and you guys will be installing R Studio and the latest version of R preferably on your Windows machine, seeing that this course was built on a Windows 10 machine. So what you can see before you are these markers. So each marker represents the magnitude value of an earthquake around the Fiji region, okay? So as you can see, we have our legend and our legend title says earthquake magnitude. So these are the magnitude values of the earthquake ranging from four to six. So as you can see, the darker the shade of blue is, the greater the magnitude. So we can see this by removing the markers. And now we have points or bubbles. And if we zoom in, we can see the darker shades or the darker colored bubbles represent a greater earthquake magnitude value. And if you zoom in, you can see smaller ones representing a smaller magnitude value. And the color is also a lighter blue color, right? So not only that, but we will also be able to add multiple base maps. So right now we have the open street map base map. So we can change that and use the world street map by Esri as our base map, right? So now we can see that we have Fiji over here and surrounding Fiji is the earthquake magnitude values. Okay, so we have Tonga as well. So this is the region where our earthquake magnitude is visible, okay? And then the next base map that we'll use is the world imagery. So we can go in and then see exactly how the aerial version of the country will look like. Right. And we can see a more clearer blue color in the magnitude values. So if we zoom in, we can even see very small magnitude values. Right. OK, so not only that but we can also change between markers and points so if we just want to see markers which will show us exact locations we can use that and if we hover over it we can still see the magnitude value for each marker right and then we can either add both or we can remove them if we want to so as you can see, this is a web application, right? So we can click here and we can work with only the map and remove the sidebar menu. We can add it back again and then we have a drop down. So e each map that we will create is under the maps drop down menu. So here you can see we have the earthquake open street map. If I click on that, you can see it's the current map that is open and then we also have the earthquake dock so the earthquake dock uses the uses a different base map called Carto db dark matter as you can see we also have a different color for our earthquake magnitude value so it's still the same map and just a different base map but the difference here between this map and the one we saw first is the fact that we can change the base map without selecting a layer from the layer control. As you can see, the layer control is gone. So our base map changes when we zoom in. So check this out. If I zoom in, you can see that our base map has changed to the Esri World Aerial Imagery base map right and if i zoom out 
you can see our base map changes back to the Carto DB dark matter base map. So we'll be learning how to do that as well. And then we have our heat map, which is also mapping the earthquake magnitude around the Fiji area. But this time we're using a heat map and we can see that the red color or the darker the density of the heat map the greater the magnitude is okay so we can see around this area we have a greater earthquake magnitude and here and around these areas we have a lesser value right so the next map that we'll be building is a different scenario than earthquakes so this will be a choropleth map and in this map we will be mapping the world population values but we'll be using a bit of an old data set but it's good enough for our purposes so here we're using shape data right and we still have the open street map as our base map and as you can see in our legend the title is world population in millions and here you have the values in millions of the populations for each country so if i hover over a country you can see that we added some styling here and we also have a a pop-up right that appears when we hover over each country and you can see the name of the country and the population value in millions okay so as you can see we can also see the color gets darker and darker as the population increases right so here we have the darkest colors which are india and china and as we know they have the greatest population so we can see that by the darker shade of brown or orange right and the lighter the color is the less the population okay so we can see that by adding some styling as well as differentiating between the colors for each country we have also added some styling to highlight the country when we hover over it so that we can clearly see that we are selecting one country right and if we zoom in we can see that we can change the opacity value right so that we can see which country it is right so this will be the last map that we'll be building and that will comprise this entire application so we will be building this application i repeat in the r programming language right and we'll be using r studio so i hope you guys will enjoy this course and i hope you will learn a lot and be able to successfully build web map applications in the r programming language and i thank you guys for tuning in and i'll see you in the next video Thank you.